for hundreds of years. This simple piece of cloth, 14 feet long, worshipped by the faithful for centuries. For centuries, a single piece of cloth has refused to give up its secrets. The Shroud of Turin, a simple linen sheet nearly 14 feet long, carrying the faint, almost ghostly image of a crucified man. The Shroud completely inspires those who believe in it because we have to remember, Jesus left no physical trace of himself on earth. He wrote nothing. There's no archeological evidence actually that he existed. Some believe it is the burial shroud of Jesus Christ himself. Others dismiss it as nothing more than an elaborate medieval forgery. But today, with artificial intelligence, the most powerful tool of the modern age, scientists have uncovered details hidden in its fibers that no human eye could. See, details that may change history. Finding that the cloth does indeed date back to the time of Christ and with artificial intelligence having something to say about the shroud as well. This is not just another relic. This is the mystery that has haunted the world for over 700 years. And what AI has just revealed left even the experts speechless. A cloth emerges. The story begins in the 14th century. In a small church in Lire, France, pilgrims gathered to see a strange relic, an ancient cloth bearing the image of a man who appeared to have been crucified. Crowds flocked to witness it. Many convinced it was the very shroud that wrapped Christ in the tomb. But from the start, controversy followed. Church officials questioned its authenticity. Skeptics called it a fraud, yet no one could explain how the image was made. The mystery deepened and the legend of the shroud began. The man in the cloth, the figure on the shroud is haunting. A man over six feet tall lies with arms crossed, wounds visible on his wrists, his feet, and his side. A crown of thorns pressed into his brow, his back covered in lash marks. Every injury mirrors the biblical account of the crucifixion, but it's not just the wounds. Forensic experts say the anatomy is astonishingly precise. Muscles, bone structures, blood flow, all far beyond the skills of any medieval artist. How could someone in the 1300s create an image with medical accuracy we barely recognized until modern times. The first photograph for centuries, the shroud remained faint, almost invisible to the naked eye. But in 1898, everything changed. When an Italian photographer, Secondo Pia, took the first photograph of the shroud, he was stunned. The negative plate revealed something unbelievable, a clear, lifelike portrait of the man in the cloth. The world was shocked. The shroud's image wasn't painted. It behaved like a photographic negative, centuries before photography existed. How was that possible? Science steps in in 1978. A group of scientists from the United States formed the Shroud of Turin Research Project, or STIRP. For five days, they ran tests, x-rays, ultraviolet light, infrared scans, and chemical analysis. Their conclusion was startling. The image was not painted, not drawn, not burned or etched. It wasn't created by pigment, dye, or brush. Instead, the image rested only on the topmost fibers of the cloth, no deeper than a fraction of a human hair. One scientist admitted, we can tell you what it isn't. We cannot tell you what it is. The carbon dating controversy in 1988, hopes of solving the mystery rose. Samples of the shroud were sent to three laboratories, Oxford, Zurich, and Arizona for radiocarbon dating. The results made headlines around the world. The cloth dated between 1260 and 1390 AD. To many, it was proof of forgery. But almost immediately, critics raised questions. The sample came from a corner of the cloth, an area known to have been repaired after a fire in the Middle Ages. Other scientists found traces of cotton mixed with the linen in that very corner. Evidence of medieval reweaving contamination, smoke damage, and handling by thousands of pilgrims could all have skewed the results. To this day, the carbon dating remains one of the most debated experiments in scientific history. Puzzles in the fibers as instruments became sharper and methods more exacting. The shroud began to give up details that only deepened the mystery. Microscopists and chemists extracted traces from the linen and found what looked unmistakably like human blood. 
tests pointed to type AB, a result that, if uncontaminated, suggested the stains were far more than artistic pigment. Palynologists, scientists who study pollen, sifted through the fibers and reported grains from plants native to the eastern Mediterranean and Anatolia, not to medieval France, hinting the cloth had at least touched or passed through the lands around Jerusalem. Textile experts examined the weave and found patterns and thread techniques consistent with ancient Near Eastern linens rather than typical European medieval weaving. Each line of evidence seemed to point in a direction that contradicted the simplest explanations. The blood appeared genuine. The pollen told a Middle Eastern story. And the cloth's construction fit an older regional tradition. Yet the more researchers probed, the more the shroud resisted tidy answers. Anomalies piled on anomalies, and every intriguing lead raised new questions about contamination, repairs, and how to separate centuries of handling from whatever event first left that haunting image. Step by careful step, the shroud revealed a portrait of complexity, one that refused to be boxed into the neat forgery label and instead demanded a far deeper investigation. Enter artificial intelligence, and then came artificial. Intelligence.researchers scanned the shroud in extreme resolution and fed the data into neural. Networks designed to detect patterns, invisible to the human eye. The results were shocking. AI reconstructed the image in three dimensions, proving that the cloth contained depth data. In other words, the image wasn't flat. It held information about the contours of the man's body, something no painting could ever replicate. And when scientists tried to simulate how the image could have been formed, they found only one answer, a flash of energy. A burst of ultraviolet light stronger than any laser we can create today. The shroud wasn't painted. It was imprinted. But by what? The face revealed. When artificial intelligence was applied to the shroud, the results shook even seasoned researchers. Algorithms trained to sharpen faint images and reconstruct lost details pulled the blurred figure on the linen into startling clarity. Out of the shadows emerged a face, defined, lifelike, and human. What had once been little more than faint imprints and ghostly outlines now appeared as the portrait of a Middle Eastern man in his early 30s. His features bore the marks of suffering, swelling along the cheekbones consistent with brutal beatings, rivulets of dried blood at the scalp that aligned with the crown of thorns described in scripture, and bruising across the brow. Yet it wasn't just pain that the image conveyed. The expression carried something deeper, an unsettling blend of serenity and sorrow, as though frozen at the very moment where agony and transcendence met. In laboratories where science typically strips emotion away, the reaction was anything but clinical. Some researchers who witnessed the enhanced face reported falling into silence, unable to speak. A few quietly walked out of the room, overcome by what they had seen. For decades, the shroud had been dismissed by many as clever medieval trickery. But what AI revealed seemed to break through that narrative. This wasn't the brushwork of an artist. It wasn't pigment layered on fabric. It was something else entirely. A human face, etched in a way no known technology could replicate for centuries afterward. For those present, it felt less like examining an artifact and more like staring across time into history itself, face to face with a man whose story still shapes the world. Hidden codes, but just when researchers thought the Shroud's mysteries had reached their peak, technology uncovered something even stranger. Artificial intelligence began mapping the weave of the cloth at a microscopic level, analyzing how fibers intersected, twisted, and aged. Buried within those intersections, Faint alignments appeared, tiny marks and patterns that didn't look random at all. To the human eye, they were nothing more than the natural irregularities of ancient fabric. But to the AI, they revealed something shocking, sequences that resembled letters. Some of the patterns looked like Hebrew script, delicate and almost etched into the linen itself. 
Others bore similarities to Greek and even fragments of Latin. The discovery raised a staggering question. Were these mere coincidences, random arrangements in a complex weave, or were they intentional inscriptions, deliberately hidden in a way invisible to the naked eye, but preserved for centuries? The implications were staggering. If genuine, the shroud wasn't just a burial cloth carrying an image, it was also a manuscript a coded message waiting to be found in the very fabric of its existence. A hidden layer of communication, whispering across time. For some, this revelation hinted at divine design, as though the cloth itself had been engineered to hold more than one story. Scholars debated endlessly. Skeptics argued that the letters were nothing but pareidolia, human brains forcing meaning onto randomness. But others, deeply shaken, couldn't ignore the precision of the patterns the way entire words seemed to emerge from the weave. Some even suggested the hidden inscriptions aligned with ancient biblical references. Phrases like Jesus Nazarene or Inri faintly appearing in the cloth. If true, the shroud was not just an image of a man. It was a message to the future. A testimony written not in ink, but in the very threads of history. Theories and controversies, the discoveries sparked a storm of theories. Believers saw it as evidence of the resurrection, the moment divine energy surged through the body, leaving its mark on the cloth. Skeptics countered with alternative explanations, unknown medieval technology, a natural chemical reaction, or a clever hoax. Some suggested radiation, others spoke of ancient knowledge lost to time. But none of the theories have fully explained every detail. The Shroud defies both science and skepticism. Why the Shroud matters? The Egypt Shroud is not just a scientific puzzle. It is a cultural and spiritual force. For Christians, it may be the most sacred relic of all time. For scientists, it is the most studied artifact in history and still unsolved. For skeptics, it remains an enigma something that refuses to be dismissed. It stands at the crossroads of faith and reason, daring us to choose how we see it. The cloth that defies time. The Shroud of Turin has survived fire, war, skepticism, and centuries of scrutiny. Adri Hudders, Satri I has uncovered hidden dimensions, lifelike faces and mysterious codes. Yet, the ultimate truth remains just out of reach. Perhaps the Shroud's purpose is not to give us proof, but to confront us with mystery, to remind us that some questions cannot be answered with science alone, that some truths are too vast to fit into our understanding. And maybe, just maybe, the Shroud is not here to tell us what to believe, but to show us that belief begins where knowledge ends.